from the Tribune News Network, this is Newsbreak. I'm Krishna Russell. The government has offered not to detain or deport any person from the Bahamas who claims to be entitled to citizenship under Article 6 of the Constitution pending the Privy Council's ruling on the Court of Appeal's recent citizenship decision, as long as the Court of Appeal simultaneously stays the effect of its ruling. Franklin Williams, the Deputy Director of Legal Affairs at the Office of the Attorney General, said during a court hearing yesterday that the government would also undertake to receive and process, but not finally analyze applications for people claiming to be so entitled to citizenship pending the Privy Council's ruling, rather than turn them away. He revealed the proposed undertaking during a decision of an affidavit filed by Wayne Monroe QC, which says the Department of Immigration is still deporting individuals, especially Haitian nationals, inclusive of minors, despite the citizenship ruling in question. The Free National Movement is expected to ratify four candidates for the next election tonight amid anticipation from FNM insiders that Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis, buoyed by favorable polling numbers, may call an early election very soon. Dr. Minnis, Deputy Prime Minister Desmond Bannister, Labor Director John Pinder, and the officer in charge of road traffic in Grand Bahama, Wellborn Boodle, are expected to be ratified for the Killarney, Carmichael, Fox Hill, and Pine Ridge constituencies the Tribune understands. This will complete the FNM slate of candidates. The Progressive Liberal Party has already ratified its 39 candidates. Although early election speculation is not unusual in the Bahamas, there has been more of it this cycle because it has emanated from people positioned to know what will happen, as opposed to idle chatter. One FNM official who has been ratified for the election told the Tribune that they would be surprised if the election is not called within the next month or two. The Royal Bahamas Defense Force has revealed that aerial and submersible drones, as well as RBDF divers, are being used in search activities for a missing jet skier. In a release yesterday, the RBDF gave an update on the search and explained the agency's actions since the man went missing on Sunday. Although police have not officially identified the victim, family members and friends said he is 28-year-old Drew Rigby. Police reported that sometime around 7 p.m. on Sunday, officers received reports of a boating accident that happened in the area of Rose Island involving a 26-foot boat and a personal watercraft. Initial investigations revealed that six people were on the boat, while two people were on the jet ski when they collided. The male driver of the jet ski received leg injuries, while his male passenger was ejected into the ocean and is still missing. Officials have made a plea to the disabled community to participate in the Ministry of Social Services and Urban Development's ongoing voluntary registration of persons with disabilities. The registration drive was launched in early 2020 and is a collaborative effort between the ministry, the National Commission for Persons with Disabilities, and its secretariat, the Disability Affairs Division, Department of Social Services, and the Urban Renewal Commission, all of which fall under the ministry's remit. Persons with disabilities, they are caregivers and or other personal support network desiring to register can do so through WhatsApp at 376-8328. That's through WhatsApp at 376-8328, email at disabilitiescommission at bahamas.gov or via commission's website disabilitiescommission.org. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news, for the owner of a small private security company with a history of avoiding paying debts and declaring bankruptcy, it looks like a good opportunity. Find people with military experience for a job in Haiti. Antonio Tony Intriago, owner of Miami-based CTU Security, seems to have jumped at the chance, hiring more than 20 former soldiers from Colombia for the mission. Now the Colombians have been killed or captured in the aftermath of the July 7th assassination of Haitian President Joe Jovenel Muiz and Intriago's business faces questions about his role in the killing. On Wednesday, Leon Charles, head of Haiti's National Police, accused Intriago of traveling to Haiti numerous times as part of the assassination plot and of signing a contract while there, but provided no other details and offered no evidence. More than 50 people have died and dozens were missing today as heavy flooding in Germany and Belgium turned streams and streets into raging torrents that swept away cars and caused houses to collapse. Recent storms across parts of Western Europe made rivers and reservoirs burst their banks, triggering flash floods overnight after the saturated soil couldn't absorb any more water. German Chancellor Angela Merkel said, I grieve for those who lost their lives in this disaster, as she expressed shock at the scope of the flooding. She is pledged to do everything possible to find those still missing.
The Tribune's AccuWeather update a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. A high-pressure ridge anchored north of the area will continue to support moderate to fresh winds, while troughing will enhance pockets of shower activity across the islands today. Boaters should remain vigilant for possible water spout activity, while beachgoers should exercise caution due to the risk of rip currents at East Coast beaches. Residents are still being urged to remain hydrated and limit outdoor activities due to high heat indices. For all areas, it'll be part partly to mostly sunny, hot, and breezy, with a few scattered showers and the chance of isolated thunderstorms, mainly offshore through tonight. Small craft caution remains in effect. Small craft operators should also be alert for gusty winds and higher seas in or near heavy showers or thunderstorms. Winds easterly at 15 to 20 knots over open waters, seas 4 to 7 feet over the ocean. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 91 degrees with a heat index of 105 and an overnight low temperature of 75. The sun will set this afternoon at 8 p.m. and will rise tomorrow morning at 6.30. That's Newsbreak. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper now on the streets or stay up to date online at Tribune242.com.